Hi, everybody. It is April 7, 2019. C. Oris. Candida Oris. Deadly. No cure. Mysterious infection spanning the globe in a climate of secrecy. It's been going on for five years. Have you heard of C. Oris? An elderly man was admitted to the Brooklyn branch of Mount Sinai Hospital for abdominal surgery. A blood test revealed that he was infected with a newly discovered germ as deadly as it was mysterious. Um, it's hit New York, New Jersey, Illinois, Texas, Connecticut. Okay, over the last five years, it has hit a neonatal unit in Venezuela, swept through a hospital in Spain, forced a prestigious British medical center to shut down its intensive care unit, and it's taken root in India and Pakistan and South Africa. It's here in the United States. And this has been going on for five years. So there's been a hush on this. Um, okay. The man at Mount Sinai died after 90 days in the hospital, but the C. Oris did not. It did not. Tests showed it was everywhere in his room, so invasive that the hospital needed special cleaning uh, equipment. They had to rip out some of the ceiling floor tiles to eradicate it. It's tenacious, in part because it is impervious to major antifungal medications making it a new example of one of the world's most intractable, intractable health threats, the rise of drug-resistant infections. I'm going to show you an awful lot of articles. I'm not going to read them. I will link to them below if you want to find out about all of these mystery illnesses, all of these drug-resistant infections, um, that we are now really saturated in based on what MSM is telling us. Now, considering the saturation of antibiotics for decades, doctors writing out prescriptions as preemptive, it was a preemptive measure? Yeah. I was amazed. It was sometime in the 90s. I was hearing from so many people who were taking antibiotics, but they weren't sick. Well, my doctor said that I might get an infection. Really? So you you might? You might. Antibiotics in factory farming, poultry, the meat you eat, all of these animals getting shot up with so many antibiotics, and then you're eating it because it arrives on your kitchen table. The overuse of antibiotics, reducing effectiveness of drugs. The rise of resistant fungi. Fungi. I've mentioned in many videos the geoengineering, you know, ACA chemtrails, the spraying of toxic chemicals and heavy metals, and fungi, and a whole lot more. Uh, it, it, it's not a surprise to me that we have so many mystery illnesses. Um, we also have a population with a compromised immune system. So let's just say we're living the perfect storm right now. Uh, germs, often called superbugs, simplistic because they don't typically kill. Well, apparently this one kills, especially if you have a immature or compromised immune system. Um, those who are vulnerable, smokers, diabetics, People with autoimmune disorders who take steroids. People with autoimmune disorders, well, that's a disorder that has exponentially increased. I have an autoimmune disorder. Well, they consider fibromyalgia an autoimmune disorder. Some do. Some actually think it's not whatever fibromyalgia because that's just a made up diagnose. Hey, you got a syndrome of uh, symptoms. And we don't know what it is, so we're going to call it fibromyalgia. Many people think it's Lyme. Lyme disease. Yeah. So maybe I just have late, 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 late stage Lyme, and it's affecting my brain. 
Maybe that's what it is. Who the hell knows? We're also living a time of the uh, diseases which they can't diagnose. You know? Undiagnosable diseases, and that is in the 1969, uh, the video that I posted, Dr. Day, in 1969, he was the head of Mount Sinai Pediatrics. Um, he gave a lecture stating, before I begin, you will not have any recording device, you will not have any pens or pencils or pads or anything, this will not be recorded, you will not take notes. This is what's going to be happening to the United States in the coming decades, and one of the subjects was undiagnosable diseases. Voila, we're here. Mystery, mystery, mystery. Um, scientists say that unless more effective new medicines are developed, this will, uh, the risk will spread to the healthier populations. United States, two million people contract risk in infections annually, and 23,000 die. That was a 10, uh, 2010 figure. More recent estimates are, whoa, 162,000 worldwide, 700,000. Wow, now that's a leap, huh? How many people have you heard about or know that have gone into a hospital and develop infection? and die. I'm hearing that more and more. Yeah, this is, we're living the perfect storm. So, we have no idea where it's coming from. C. Oris. We've never heard of it. It's just spread like wildfire. Well, that's not very good. Coming to America? It's here. United States. 587 cases of people having contracted C. auris um, have been reported, concentrated with 309 in New York, 104 in New Jersey, 144 in Illinois. Uh, the symptoms, fever, aches, fatigue. Wow. Okay. So, if you have aches, if you feel fatigued, if you get a fever. Now people are going to be freaking out that they have C. auris. Maybe that's in part why they're writing these articles. Um, you know, these symptoms are. Are they seemingly ordinary in New York Times? No, they are ordinary. But when a person gets infected, particularly someone already unhealthy, some commonplace symptoms can be fatal. Well, death is a symptom or the result of all symptoms. So, yes, it's in New York, it's in Connecticut, it's in Texas, it's in Chicago. Um, it, workers in hospitals are nervous about it. The germ had spread to long-term care facilities in Chicago. 50% um, of the residents at some nursing homes have tested positive. I, this is all according to the CDC. Now, I understand that when people leave comments saying um, this is mainstream media, so it's fake news. You can't just, you can't leap there, okay? Mainstream media still does report some truth. But the point is, um, they, we, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. But when you have life experience that kind of uh, resonates with what you're living, hearing that a whole lot of people are coming down with infections in hospitals, in Ann Med, Anderson, South Carolina, there are so many people who will not step foot in that hospital. And in fact, I have a friend who had to have hip surgery, and she said, no way will I go to Ann Med. Well, guess what? I just had a friend who had a brother who was admitted to Adamid, and he he had kidney dialysis on a Saturday. Sunday he was dead. 
his heart just stopped beating. All right. Um, there was a time when trust of those wearing white coats, uh, they deserved it. But that was a long time ago. They do not deserve it anymore. And for some reason, South Carolina, and I have a South Carolina uh, category for bookmarking articles. I don't understand. South Car what is it with South Carolina? They have either the lowest or the highest ranking on for categories that are not good. Uh, okay. I think I'll pause you here. The little dogs are out barking up a storm. Storm? Maybe they stopped? Okay. Um, South Carolina. The no state beats us in terms of people dying of infections, MRSA, in hospitals. Yeah. And apparently, domestic violence, cruelty to animals, and another thing I can't remember. Um, so, but it's not just South Carolina. You know, I I hear from subscribers and read comments. Hospitals now, well, they are life-threatening, unfortunately. So what's happening also, um, workers around this sea orus, those who have it, um, workers are worried for their own safety. I found myself not wanting to touch the guy. I didn't want to take it from the guy and bring it to someone else. There was an overwhelming feeling of being terrified of accidentally picking it up on a sock or a tie or a gown. You know, I can't imagine someone speaking like this. You know, like that's your quote, really? Overwhelming feeling of being terrified of accidentally picking it up on a sock, a tie, or a gown. I just don't see, you know, now. When you read something like this, um, very often there is a tendency to go, God, you know, this is all fake. No, they might just throw in these dramatic quotes for, hey, let's have some uh, real drama to get people more and more interested in this. But I could also say, because people are afraid of their own shadow, my God. All right, so uh, pesticides. The use of pesticides. Many are speculating that that is the reason why we have these super bugs. Well, that could be. But here, another real uh, dramatic ending. Jasmine Coulter, 29, went to visit her 72-year-old father at the hospital in New York City, Mount Sinai, uh, where she had been, where he had been admitted because of complications from surgery. Complications from surgeries. You hear that a lot too. Um, the previous month, when she arrived at his room, she discovered that he had been sitting for at least an hour in a recliner in his own feces because no one had come in when he had called for help to use the bathroom. Ms. Coulter said it became clear to her that the staff was afraid to touch him because a test had shown that he was carrying C. oris. I saw doctors and nurses looking in the window of his room. My father's not a guinea pig. You're not going to treat him like a freak show. All right, well, that's the article. So C. oris is the latest and greatest uh, rapidly spreading antibiotic resistant germ that is fatal. Okay, well, let's see. Medieval diseases flare as unsanitary living conditions proliferate. So all of those diseases that were eradicated due to uh, sanitary conditions um, improving here in this country. Now we're coming back and who's, who, who are they blaming? The homeless. The homeless. Yes. So, middle-aged 
Middle Ages, these diseases, typhus. Um, here's another uh, bacteria, Shingella bacteria, as well as Bartonella quintana, uh, which spreads through body lice and causes trench fever. This Shigella bacteria, which is spread through feces and causes diarrhea. Uh, hepatitis A also spread primarily through feces infected more than 1,000 people in South, Southern California in the past two years. Um, the disease also has erupted in New Mexico, Ohio, Kentucky, and it's among people who are drug users or the homeless. Well, we've had drug users and homeless people for a whole long time. Yeah, we have more of them now, but New York City, New York City, Homeless all over the place. They weren't spreading medieval diseases. They want people to get vaccines. And you know what? That we now see mainstream media articles where feces are all over the place in uh, San Francisco and other areas, Oregon, Washington State. Very easy, very easy to cure that. You know, you don't want to do anything about housing and landlords just want more and more money. You don't want to uh, do anything. Well, we know the economy is deliberately rigged. And yes, they are causing people to uh, lose their jobs, lose their homes, end up homeless. All right. Uh, you don't want to offer any public bathrooms. Most businesses in New York, decades ago, they were putting up signs. Um, you know, only those who are customers can use the bathroom. Um, then just put out porto potties. Oh, geez, can't do that. All right, rare drug resistant infection found in Wyoming. Hospital patient. Uh, testing revealed the bacteria responsible for the infection is. Uh, Enterobacteriaceae, I don't know, family. Uh, it contains an antibiotic resistant gene called MCR1. Antibiotic resistant. Um, unusual antibiotic resistant resistance found in more than 200 bacteria. Uh, centers for Disease Control or Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's Antibiotic Resistant Lab Network detected 221 instances of bacteria with especially rare resistance genes in the United States. All right, the last three articles that I'm going to be, or three, uh, one video, two articles, well, it, the it, center it suddenly brings home <laughs> what we're dealing with? Perhaps. 27 cases of rare antibiotic resistant infection confirmed in Texas. Lubach. Here. Um, great. My computer's slow. Uh, new nightmare bacteria, bacteria are popping up all over the United States. What is going on? And and people are, you know, they're getting sick, but what's going on? Let's get that off. Um, what's worse than nightmare bacteria that are resistant to nearly all antibiotics? This truly was, you know, the evil people, look, they're not stupid. You know, when they have an agenda and they want to get the job done, they do. They do. Okay, now, uh, maybe early 80s, late 80s, let's start increasing those antibiotics. Let's get people taking a lot of antibiotics, kill their immune system, and uh, the antibiotics will stop working. Oh, it'll take a couple of decades. Then we're going to flood the environment with all these anti-resistant germs. Only one method to kill off 
a whole lot of people. And they have so many methods that they are employing. A mystery E. coli outbreak sickens 72 people in five states. Mystery E. coli, they don't know where it's coming from, uh, but people are getting sick. 72 people in five states have become ill, yet the cause of their infection remains unknown. The CDC says, yes, Georgia, Kentucky, Ohio, Tennessee, Virginia. Government scientists have not identified a food item, grocery store, or restaurant chain as the source of these infections. So CDC says, go on and eat. Well, you don't know where this is coming from. Um, symptoms of this bacterial infection, which usually begins about three or four days after consuming the bacteria, can include watery or bloody diarrhea, fever, abdominal cramps, nausea, and vomiting. Rare that people die from it. We have 10 plagues reappearing today. Reappearing today. Wow. A river in Indonesia suddenly turned blood red. All righty. We are living a very strange time. Uh, first plague, water to blood. Blood. Yeah, blood red rivers suddenly appear in multiple locations. Hail. <laughs> Seventh plague, hail. Okay. Hold out your arm toward the sky that hell may fall on all the land of Egypt. Look at the hail that has been damaging roofs, cars, breaking car windows. Oh, it's not manufactured by man. No. It's, uh, it's prophecy. Locusts. Darkness. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Yeah. And they can bring about darkness. Death of the firstborn. Well, we have an exponential rise in SIDS. Sudden infant death syndrome. Oh, it's not from uh, vaccines. But this says firstborn. So, I don't know. We do have a rise of miscarriages. Oh, my God. Mystery virus spreading like wildfire across the United States population, putting people in bed for a month. Is this a depopulation bioweapon experiment? I don't think these are experiments. I think these are the weapons that they are using to cause a lot of people to die. And they use various uh, weapons so that no one has the same exact symptoms that then people would begin to say, okay, all of these people have exactly the same symptom. And that then would point to a particular cause. No, we've got to mash it up, you know, mix it up and just have a whole lot of disease and syndrome and illnesses and all of the, the, the ones that we knew about before will have them exponentially increase, but most people we understand don't do the research, so they won't know that there is an exponential increase in everything that people are dying from. So this virus, uh, it's, it's a very unusual cough. Many of you have left comments saying, you had a cough that you couldn't get rid of and a few other symptoms and you felt sick for a month. You couldn't get rid of it. And sometimes, you know, during that month or after the month, you had maybe a couple of days of feeling good and that you were recovering and boom, it came back. You know, <laughs> passengers removed from flight with mysterious illness. We see that more and more often. Passengers removed from flight. Uh, report warns of rise in drug-resistant tuberculosis. 15-year-old Smithville girl battles mystery illness 
that's left her permanently blind. All of those mystery illnesses where children were ending up in the hospital paralyzed. What is really uh, just shocking is we used to be a healthy country. We're not anymore. We are a very sick country. So you would think that that would beg questions in people's minds, like what the hell has gone on in such a relatively short period of time? In my lifetime, Americans, they were not obese, they were quite healthy, and now we have, you, you go out in the public, obesity off the charts, and not too many people look healthy. And I ask, you know, strangers in stores, you know, that if I have a conversation, you know, how are you? What do I hear from uh, cashiers? How are you? Exhausted. Exhausted. Exhausted is the number one. Um, you would think that people would begin to ask questions about the environment. 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 These diseases, these mystery illnesses, uh, these germs, these bacteria, uh, viruses, they're not just coming out of nowhere. So we're doing something wrong. And when you recognize, ah, pesticide use has increased phenomenally, you see what's happening in the sky, the microwave frequencies, ah, that vaccine schedule, psychiatric medications, all of this only increasing, you would begin to recognize, okay, it's not about going to the doctor, getting the latest and greatest pill, or getting a vaccine, getting vaccinated for some illness. It's about cleaning up our environment. Okay. Shocking research. Prozac could be driving the antibiotic resistance crisis. Prozac? You're kidding. It's a global threat, this antibiotic resistant time that we are living. And Prozac may be contributing. A study published in the journal Environment International confirmed that the antidepressant drug um, fluoxetine commonly known as Prozac or Serafim, directly causes multi-antibiotic resistance via genetic mutation. Wow. Do you think that was purposeful? I do. Um, but, you know, it's really amazing. Here, although it's not entirely known why increasing neurotransmitter levels reduce the severity of a depression, no, they don't know. They even don't even know if serotonin affects depression and there is no chemical imbalance. Well, not before you take these medications. These medications will create a chemical imbalance in your brain. Um, but here, it may be that increased levels of serotonin cause changes in the brain's concentration of neurotransmitter binding receptors. This might make the brain physically more capable of feeling good. How long has Prozac been in, on the market? This, okay, 1986, 1987. Prozac, the cure of mental illness. How long ago was that? Mm, decades, decades, decades ago. Mental illness is skyrocketing, and they still don't know how these medications work. <laughs> they don't. Uh, They are destroying you. They destroy your immune, your immune system. The adverse effects are so numerous, countless. Um, but when you find out that, wow, genetic mutation, multi-antibiotic resistance via genetic, genetic mutation. Okay. I'd say they know, they knew, and that's why they wanted it out there. That's why they destroy your immune system. I'll link below to this article. Factory farms, food recalls, antibiotics.
Factory farms use the majority of antibiotics, and the overuse of antibiotics is causing antibiotic resistance, one of the most serious public health issues facing our world today. How about this? <laughs> Scientists are creating new incurable diseases in labs. Does that sound reasonable? Scientists are creating new incurable diseases in labs. Swine flu, H1N1, had been dead for 20 years when it suddenly reemerged in 1977 with a curious twist. The new strain was genetically similar to one from the 1950s, almost as though it had been sitting frozen in a lab since then. Indeed, it eventually became clear that the late 70s flu outbreak was likely the result of a lowly lab worker's snafu. They're releasing these germs, this bacteria, these viruses. They're releasing them. Recent years, scientists have found a way to make H5N1 jump between ferrets, the best animal model for flu viruses, in humans. They say they need to create a transmissible version in order to better understand the disease and to prepare potential vaccines. Uh, two epidemiologists wrote in PLOS Medicine editorial that creating these types of new infectious agents puts human life at risk. The concern is that you're making something that doesn't exist in nature and combines high virulence for people with the ability to transmit efficiently. Vaccination smallpox was eradicated in 1980, but there are still two samples of it living in labs, one in the U.S., one in Russia. There is no cure for smallpox, and it kills a third of its victims. The rest suffer permanent scarring from the thousands of pox or fluid-filled cysts. The hazard is, could it ever, by accident or by evil design, leave those two containments and actually be introduced into the population again and spread? Sure. Absolutely. I think that's why we're seeing mainstream media talk about these medieval plagues that are coming back. The Middle e Ages, those diseases are coming back. Suddenly, we'll hear about smallpox. I have, I will not be surprised at all. Uh, yeah, William Schaff, Sch Schaffner, Chair of Preventive Medicine at Vanderbilt University Medical Center, Nashville, told ABC News, the World Health Assembly is deciding this week whether to destroy the virus. The, the vials, they won't. They won't destroy it. Yes, we have labs. They're doing all this experimentation. Gee, let's see, honey. If I put this deadly germ into a, a monkey that is only known to be in one country in Africa, will it spread to you in Funk, Ohio? People are crazy. And these are the people who are, you know, uh, looked at as, oh my God, they're brilliant. They're, they're like still in their parents' garage, blowing it up, as, you know, kids do. Oh, I just want to do an experiment. Oh, blew up my parents' garage. There are some things that you just shouldn't mess around with, but, yeah, you got to look also at what, what are they spraying? What are they spraying? Wow. Now that doesn't look like a contrail, does it? All right. Uh, this is a compilation of what pilots, the film pilots, have taken of other planes spraying. Oh, wow. Now look at the color difference. What are they spraying right here? That is not a contrail. They are spraying 
toxic heavy metals, biologicals, no doubt, fungi, and our immune systems are so suppressed that many people are getting very sick now and dying. Really? You're going to tell me that that's a contrail. All right, guys, the population, we don't have overpopulation anymore. And that'll be a video that I will be posting soon enough. More people are dying than are being born.